Mike Farley. We're in South Lake, Texas today. Nice windy spring day off the freeway here uh, at Barbecue Outfitters. This is one of the best places to look at all different kinds of outdoor kitchen appliances. So we have everything from the Green Egg, the Fire Magic, the AOG, to Twin Eagles and Weber and El Fresco and DCS doing a competition cook-off today. So I'm probably going to gain 10 pounds eating all this fabulous food. The challenge is uh, it's a lot of meat, uh, but there's also lots of great things, uh, some grilled asparagus and grilled sweet peas and grilled pineapple. And I hear there's going to be a cast iron brownie here in a little bit. So we're going to have everything from you know, wonders at the beginning to our main meats to uh, vegetables to dessert. So enjoy the journey as uh, we uh, show you all the things you missed. But you know, you can uh, come by here every Saturday and they're almost always cooking out something uh, that's always fun. So uh, come by Barbecue Outfitters for lots of great information on what you can do in your outdoor kitchen. Grill. We're just starting out doing some appetizers, kind of getting, you know, getting rolling for, you know, the tailgate party or whatever we're going to do. Right. For right now, I'm doing some uh, sweet pepper stuff with goat cheese. Oh, wow. And uh, it's a nice little appetizer. And a lot of people, you know, the jalapeno poppers are good, but you know, not everybody likes the, you know, likes the heat. Right. But most everybody can take these. And this is a nice, you know, kind of a, a sweet, and the cheese always cools off. So how long do they usually cook? Well, you probably put them on for maybe about uh, you know, six, eight minutes. And you'll see them, they'll start popping a little bit. And it's just that, that, you know, that skin getting get pushed up. You really just kind of want to melt the cheese is all you do. So what temperature do you usually set that? I keep it on low. Okay. Just because for these things, what we're doing, I mean, it's just, I mean, we're not cooking to serve dinner at, at seven. You know right. what I mean? We're, we're uh, killing some time. We're just kind of... Making progressing it, as we it, go. Making it last, that's yeah. right. So that's typically what we'll do. We'll just do a few little, little things and kind of... What are we doing here? Yeah. Deep tenderloin. Deep tenderloin. Oh, Nothing yeah. better on the grill. Nothing. Nothing. This, this is top rank. This, this is the one where if you were going to entertain and you wanted to impress the most important person you ever had over for dinner, this is what you'd want to do. Okay, so how do we set this up? Super easy. Pull that deep tenderloin out of the pack. Take a little bit of the trim it a little bit on there, slide it right on the spit drum. All I literally did was put the pan underneath it, pour a jar of marinated mushrooms, a little bit of beef broth, and a package of lip of the uh, French onion soup. And we're gonna let that sit there and self-baste and cook from that rotisserie. And in about an hour and a half, boom. Fat side will be a little more medium rare. The middle's gonna be about medium, and the, the far right's gonna be a little more well. So that way you've got everybody covered at your dinner party. And how'd you set that up? Yeah. Just by the burners? Oh, no burners down below. All the back burners. All, all the back, back burners. So we're not using the bottom burners at all. We're using that heat from the back. It's a uh, unique back burner in that it's a foam stainless steel burner. You have to close the lid? Yeah, you want to close the lid. You're basically using it like an oven, doing like a rotisserie chickens, and we're doing it with But it does the video is good that way. Hey, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. Dorothy, help! Give me a little video. <laughs> so here, we have a uh, smoked chicken tortilla soup. Oh, wow. So what I've done was I... Cast iron? Cast iron, baby. Oh, cast iron. Cast iron. Oh, all the way. All the way. Yes, so this is, uh, I smoked the chicken, right? Pulled it, and I made my tortilla soup with smoked chicken. Really delicious. So I'll have to try some here in a minute. Okay. Over here. technology that you know exactly when it's done. Okay. So it's just about ready. We're going to make some pulled pork tacos with that. They're going to be very delicious with a little slaw. And then a soup we're going to serve with a little crispy tortillas on it. So how long has it been cooking? This cooks for about six hours. Low and slow. Okay. So okay. I've been out here all night. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you for yeah. your dedicated service. That's it. Dedication, baby. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then we're going to do some, uh, some smoked brisket sliders. I mean, pulled pork sliders and smoked brisket tacos. So on your Weber, you can cook slow or you can you cook low and slow. You cook anything. My, my biggest thing is teaching people how to bring everything outside to the outside. So, oh, yeah. the whole culinary aspect to it. 
And you literally can cook everything else off. Well, off in a boiling bath of blue moon beer. Because you know when you cook broth, they start to kind of lose their interest in the barbecue. So if you finish them off in the beer, they continue cooking, but they absorb the flavor in the beer, but they still keep the crispiness on the outside. So, uh, why blue moon beer? Because it's what my wife likes. Okay, well, that's an important <laughs> thing. So put it in the fridge and see if Yeah. So I've got some wings here that you can see. It's going to cook well in this hot wrap. You're saying this down here on the fire. That's because it's got convection fans just roll and roll that beautiful smoke and heat. We normally recommend one minute on each side. One minute on each side. And then turn it, and then one minute on each side that way. And then you move it over to the cooler side to cook it. Okay. So you don't have to shut the lid? No, we curl with our lid open. So we've done it a little on both sides so yep. far. Almost a minute probably on each side. Okay. <laughs> right. Keep it on low. You can either keep it up low or high, depending on what you're searing. You know, if you're doing chicken, you might want to do it on low. Yeah, you get those nice pretty marks on there. Yeah. You can do just about anything. Like I have the cast iron skillet going. I do a lot of mac and cheese inside of there. Um, I do a lot of fruits and vegetables too. Sometimes. It's not all about the meat, meat. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Salmon. So what did you put on that? Olive oil and some seasoning, okay. paprika, a little pepper. Yeah. Wait a second. It's not me. Oh, it's good. It's got vegetables on the grill. So we'll go with shrimp on the Barbie here in a second. Excellent. Don't call me Barbie. <laughs> I thought it was Shirley. Shirley. Shirley, don't call me. Then we go get more tea. More tea. I got a system. <laughs> you got to try one. Thanks, sir. You're welcome. A lot of our grills are uh, the infrared burner in the back. Uh, we're doing prime rib on here, taking about two and a half hours. Sticky buns. Uh, what I did was I put them on there and then I uh, covered them with uh, brown sugar. And then take some uh, white cake corn syrup and an egg yolk and some butter, mixed it up, and then poured it over the top, sprinkled some pecans on it. And then when I take it off, I put some cream cheese frosting in it. So how did your uh, peppers and cheese come out? Uh, I think it was a hit. There's a couple left. Oh, well, only a couple. That's a good sign. Yeah, I probably went through about uh, about it right now. So what's a salt block? This is a Himalayan salt block. Okay. Uh, it's gotten uh, rave reviews because it's all natural salt. It's not an iodized uh, salt. When you're cooking on it, you can actually use it cold to serve cheeses or sushis and whatnot. And you know, it'll import just a little bit of a seasoning to your food. And the same thing when you're grilling. Um, these snap peas, they're naturally kind of sweet. Well, without any seasoning at all, we'll pull them off and you taste one and let me know. But we're going to do snap peas, asparagus without any seasoning on them. And we're going to do some chicken thighs. My wife loves her steak on here with no seasoning. You're going to get just the taste of the food. You're not going to get any of the uh, other seasonings that would be on it. And, and uh, whether it's artificial MSG or anything. So is this like a tray? Yeah, that's so a tray just to hold it so we can pick it up real easy. We could put it straight on the grill without it if we wanted to. But that's got the handles for easy serving. You want to do it cold or hot either way. So that's how you salt something without putting salt on it. Correct. Okay. And, and it's uh, a much better salt for you. And it's right. just, just a hint of it. I use um, sea salt at home. Yeah, yeah, same. It's, it's, it's almost the same. But this Himalayan is a little bit like a sea salt. Awesome. Yeah. So we had some breakfast uh, here. And oh, the cinnamon rolls, you're too late. So come again sometime soon. Cinnamon rolls, get ready to come off again. Oh, well, we got, <laughs> got a new round. Got a new yeah. round coming. Okay. This is pork tenderloin. So when you rest it, when you rest something, what do you do? It allows the meat to, the, if you cut it into it right now, what will happen is all the juice will run out. So what it does is absorb the, the juices back into the meat because it's still in the cooking process. And as it starts to settle down, 
when you cut into it, it keeps the juices in the meat as opposed to out. It's kind of like uh, if you do a brisket in foil, and you do it maybe halfway through the cookout, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of juice on the inside. On the outside, you put the foil, it should be on the inside. That's a part of resting. And that will that meat will re re retract it back into itself. That's all. It depends on the cut of meat. Uh, this cut of meat, 10, 15 minutes. This leg here, about 15 minutes. Okay. A brisket, about two hours. So do you wrap it back or is it wrapped up tight? You can. Uh, you can right now. When I take it out, I set it on the butcher block and it's ready to go. Yeah, this, I cut a little bit to try it and it's Cook this on the egg? Yes. What's this? This is pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. Good. Oh, maybe a couple hours. A couple hours? That one. Oh, that's a good toothpick. Oh, <laughs> it's even a better toothpick now. It's good. It's a good tasting toothpick. Yeah. Good? That's a good tenderloin. We got grilled asparagus, we got grilled uh, sweet potatoes. So get your vegetables and, and your meat off your Memphis grill, right? That's it. No way. Air cooling in action. So it's not all about meat, we can cook vegetables and we can do everything. We can do a whole meal. Do the whole Same meal at one time. Yeah, yeah. one time. So your veggies, your taters, your, your desserts. We're going to do dessert here in a minute. Okay. Well, a few minutes. Grilled pound cake with uh, <laughs> fruit topping and a whipped uh, cream on top. And I'm going to do a cast iron brown. Cast iron brown. Oh, awesome. Wow. All right, they're good. Made from scratch. Made from scratch. Pineapple chutney. I've got grilled red bell pepper and jalapenos and a little bit of cilantro. And I put the steak seasoning on the pineapple. So it kind of contrasts the sweetness of the pineapple. It kind of lightens up the fare a little bit. Everything around here is a little meaty today, as you can tell. Something a little bit lighter to munch on. Uh, just about a minute on each side to grill on high. So just want to get some caramelized grill marks on there and then I'll be done. I love the mushroom. Uh, it's just the juices from the prime rib. I put a little beef broth in it. A little beef broth in it, some seasoning, onions and mushrooms, and just put it in the bottom. And then the juices from the meat. Do you like jalapeno? And then you just cook these for a while, and, and about, right before they're about done, you take them and just drop a little cheese on the top. So I make these little deals here, and then I put them on the, okay. and I put them on the grill. We got potatoes in there too. Yeah. Like little roses, little roses. Chicken and carrots. I've never done carrots. I thought I'd try. So we've got not a brownie out of a box. This is a homemade brownie. You don't do anything out of the box. No, sir. It doesn't take that much longer. <laughs> He's killing me. And all this was, is, I mean, it's flour, sugar, egg, chocolate, butter. Cast iron skillet. And my cast iron skillet. You got to keep it on the fire magic here. Fill the center one. So it'll, it'll cook on indirect. Okay. All right. So it's going to take about 45 minutes. And I'll keep turning it every 10 minutes. What do you have? Middle heat? Medium heat? So I've got the middle off. And, and, I, and I'm just doing indirect. You take that pound cake and grill it for, I mean, like 30 seconds. And just get grill marks on it. Changes the whole flavor of it. Really? People will think that you, what you put on this? Sugar or whatever? That's very good fruit. Pancake, whipped cream, grilled pound cake, grilled curd. One minute on the grill. Now this is going to take a while. I buy it at Costco pre-sliced. Throw a little bit of olive oil on there and then I use this um, sweetened heat 
also gives it a little bit of a brown sugar tangy taste to it. We'll throw that on top of it and then grill it for a couple minutes tops. I love it. You feel like you're eating something kind of healthy. Yeah, something besides meat. Yeah, see? Olive oil with a little bit of seasoning. Okay. And it'll it'll be nice. You know, a lot of people don't think of doing veggies on a grill, but I grill all the veggies on there on those, and it's really nice. It's on top of the really nice and the texture to it. So it's got something lid here. It's at about 395. You can do whatever temperature you want, really. Somewhere between 350 to 510. So about. So this is, we're gonna make tacos here. Yeah. Uh, Sliders, we're going to be sliders right there. Sliders? You know what we can do though? Dude, sliders here. Grill some buns. Yeah, you got to grill buns. Yeah. Grill the buns. We're going to take some of our delicious cool pork here. Look at that. Ooh. So a little smoke ring right there. That's what you want right there. That's how you know it's ready. Put a little bit in here. Then we're going to take some of the uh, 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 barbecue sauce. This is my product here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's kind of a little bold. It's a little sweet. But there's a little heat in the back.